Open up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Lady and gentlemen, the beer room. Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Aaron Williams. And we are back. It is the Beer Guys Radio Show. BeerGuysRadio.com is our website. We are radio for the local craft beer movement. And I'm Aaron Williams. And I'm Tim Dennis. This week on the show, we're going to be talking to Birmingham's Cahaba Brewing, Eric Meyer. He is the uh, brewmaster and one of the founding partners there. And we'll also have, or we do have, L. Sharpton we in do. the house with us tonight. L, how you doing? Ooh, ooh. What's up, homies? How you been, man? So, yeah. L was on a show with us uh, pre-launch. It was a practice show. Our he was Thanksgiving kind pairings that, yeah. that you did with we us, We go man. back like bra so, strap. That's how we roll. Yeah, man. Good time. So, thanks for joining us again, L. We appreciate it. It's been a while. So, yeah. Hey, we've got uh, Tim's Whale of the Week, and we're going to check out the hot list as well. What's going on around Atlanta Georgia and Alabama. But uh, first, you know what? You're opening up a really I'm, beautiful beer that we're going to discuss that in just a second. But first, I want to talk about what happened this week. So, what you, you had a light week this week, didn't you? I did. It's a fairly light week. My dad was in town, Aaron. I uh, had a good time. He's not a big beer drinker, but I still managed to get a few in. So, uh, I went over and visited Scofflaw last week. I got a video That's up right. on that. They gave me a little preview there. I got to sample uh, one of the beers that they had in the Bright Tank and one that was just finishing fermentation. A stout that they're going to put in some bourbon barrels, mm-hmm. and uh, they're going to be launching. They've got launch events starting the 26th, and he said they're going to have a ton of launch events coming up. So they'll they'll be soon. Tasting room will be opening soon. Um, something we'll talk a little bit a bit more. But I went to Cherry Street. Oh yes, and I drank a beer there. I had their Pianga Cot. Which is a I'm, Berliner. I'm glad you said that, not me. I think yes. that's kind of a bad word in some cities. It so, is. Yeah. Yes, you get the translation of it. But that is a uh, Berliner with uh, mango, there you go. apricot, peach? peach. Sure. Do you know, El? Have you had that beer? Which one is it? It's called Pianga Cot from Cherry Street. They're fruited Berliner. No, I heard it's gangster, though. Yeah, it's good stuff. So, And I took beer to go. There you well, go. Left there. Yeah, so congratulations to, <laughs> yeah. to the folks up there in Cherry Street for getting that beer They've to go you know, past long past fight, But they got that done. Yeah. So. And that uh, went out to dinner, had a white blackbird and yep. some Bebo and stuff. So that was my week. Excellent. I had a week of IPAs. It just, just, it wasn't planned, but just everything I cracked open was an IPA. So, so I had my trop. Uh, I always have, I take the kids to the pool and hang out and I, I got to have my trop Kelly when that happens. Uh, also a three tavern. It's not on Ponce. A Sweetwater IPA, Trim Tab IPA, of course. Uh, we talked to them a couple weeks ago and, uh, one of my favorites, of course, the Orpheus Transmigration of Souls. And then completely off balance, I had a blue pants pe- peanut butter pink stripe stout. So I know had to balance it out there. I'm, That's I'm, a good beer. No, that I, peanut butter I, uh, stout is nice. Yeah, and I hear that they've got a candy yeah. bar st- uh, stout off of that yes. too. I yep. may have to take a trip to Alabama just to get that. So, L, how about you, man? What'd you drink this week? Oh man, <laughs> what did you drink? too long? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I actually um, I got my cruising for a bruising on, which is a uh, part of my website, and I went to like. Three different cities, man, and within a week. I went to Savannah, Georgia, Detroit, and Dallas. And uh, I guess we'll wrap up about the Dallas trip a little bit. But uh, I just try to visit as many dope beer bars as possible during those trips. So, like, in Dallas, um, we had this place, Mammoth, something Moth. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's an amazing restaurant, 40 Taps. Uh, a couple other breweries that were popping. And then um went to Detroit and got it in over there. And they have an amazing beer scene, too. That's developing. Slows, you want to go there. Slows Barbecue is gangster. Nice. I've heard yeah. of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Slows so. is dope. Barbecue. Good stuff, man. Good excellent. stuff. Now, we've got some excellent stuff, too, by the way. It is time for Truck and Taps Beer of the Week. Crack open a cold one. It's the Truck and Tap Beer of the Week. Woo-hoo! Craft beer and food trucks in downtown Woodstock. Truckandtap.com. Yeah, so we've got uh, actually lots of beers we do. in the studio. I, I, I'm our coolers quite, runneth over. They do, actually. What have you got so, in your hands there? Tim? So I have one. Our friend uh, Jarrett from Bells, he uh, represents Bells. He uh, dropped us off some samples, a few beers for us here. And we just cracked open a new one from them, Poolside. Really good. Which is a Belgian-style <laughs> wheat ale with cherry juice. This is great, man. Yeah. This is great. So it's uh, light. The cherry isn't overdone. It's sweet, you know, not too tart. Uh, the nice wheat body to it, but uh, that is good stuff. And that's five yeah, percent, and it's amazing and complex for that mm-hmm. percentage. Um, and like you said, not too sweet, well balanced. Yeah, and that's what you want by a pool. So it's right on point. Yeah, it is definitely a nice poolside beer. Like you said, that that's wheat, you got a little bit of that cherry juice in there, uh, just enough body, and, right. and and I could 
absolutely imagine having this by the pool. So this absolutely. Is a, I think this is Bell's newest one. So, yeah. so thanks uh, again to get, having uh, this one to crack open. I've been looking forward to this one. And then other beers of the week, we yes. are going to drink some digits. Yes, we're we are. We're going to drink some Burnt Hickory Digits, which is one uh, we know we enjoy. And Aaron, you brought a couple. For us I to, did, so, actually. Some so, beers. Yes, I did. I was lucky enough to uh, find some Prairie Artisan Ales. was able to go ahead and get that uh, that uh, uh, the birthday bomb. The birth, bomb. The birthday bomb. And, <laughs> Dropping uh, the bomb. Also, I've got the, the Brandy uh, 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 Noir, too, so I'm very happy. Apple to, Brandy Apple Barrel brandy Noir, barrel right? Noir. Yes. So I'm looking forward to those. Yeah, it's that's a rarity, good. and that'll be so, fun. So we'll yeah. crack those open here sometime yeah, soon. Yeah, and El brought uh, he brought some automatic. I brought some Which automatic creature yep. comforts. You know, this is my favorite pale ale for the summer right no, now. That's great. And then Black Rocks from uh, directly from Detroit, um, and it's a limited release in pure IPA called the Murray Project. So a little treat, you know, mm-hmm. bring a little Michigan back home with me. No, I appreciate that. Out of Marquette. You know, I don't. We can't. Uh, Skip Cahaba this week, but we could probably spend the whole show just talking about the beers we've got here. We probably could. <laughs> yeah. now, of course, you know, we've got Cahaba coming up in the next segment. Yes. Uh, Eric Meyer there. He's got some great beers, but uh, we've got some great ones in front of us right now. So that's uh, certainly a very nice perk of being the Beer Guys and on the Beer Guys radio show. Let's take a look at some headlines. What's in the news? The Beer Guys have the scoop. Extra, extra, read all about it. Time for headlines. First of all, I'm very excited that Marquise, our producer, he's been out for the past few weeks. He's coming back tomorrow. So you don't have me behind the uh, behind the wheels. I enjoy anymore. watching you try to bounce back and forth and it, it get is, everything done. You know what? I, I, I miss Marquise when he's not here because we'll he do it works so hard. Exactly. <laughs> Lots of post-production. So, hey, we've got uh, some news from uh, Schmaltz and Terrapin. Of course, last year they teamed up for their reunion ale for charity, and they've got another one coming out uh, here uh, in the next uh, couple of months, too. It's called the Beer for Hope, a fundraising effort on behalf of the Institute of Myeloma and Bone Cancer Research. And it uh, looks like the reunion ale 16 is going to be an 8% ABV with a dark ale with chocolate, cocoa nibs, cinnamon, vanilla, ginger, and Mexican chili pepper. It's brewed up there in the Schmaltz facility. That's in upstate New York. Uh, and Spike uh, Bukowski, the Terrapin brewmaster there, uh, traveled uh, to help brew that latest collaboration. So that's kind of a cool deal they do up there with the... Collabs are fun. Yeah, yeah they It's are. neat to see that reunion ale. I've enjoyed that uh, quite a bit. That's and tasty that, beer. And, and last year, I think it was like the Yam beer, I believe is what it was, uh, that collab too. So, so kind of cool that they're uh, doing some other things. And Terrapin's going crazy, though. With the collabs, because they've got another one that's supposed to ship next month with Heavy Seas out of Maryland. Uh, they've got a rye wit that's a barrel-aged rye wit, actually. It's been aged in white wine barrels for 16 weeks. And uh, again, so it's uh, got a, it says it's got a little light fruit, spice, and citrus on that uh, with a good malt backbone. Is the third installment in the Heavy Seas Partnerships series. And again, that's with Terrapin. So uh, from what I see here from Beer Street Journal, uh, it says that they're about to hit shelves August 22nd. So Or right. in August... Sorry, I misread that. In August, in 22-ounce bottles. So I don't want to get a specific dates on that. So look for it sometime next month. Watch it, Aaron. I get in trouble those for facts, specific man. dates. Exactly. Yes. Absolutely. So that's always good. Uh, also, cool, a couple of uh, folks coming in to the states. First of all, Bold Rock Hard Cider out of Virginia. They're going to start uh, moving in again beginning in August, which is uh, very nice, but also some even better news, I think, for folks. Uh, burial. I'm excited you, about that one. You announced that uh, earlier yes. this week on BeerGuysRadio.com, yes. and that's uh, that's something I'm really excited about, too. So Yeah, I visited them. I've had their beers uh, a few times. They're ones that make it to bottle shares here a good bit. Uh, I visited up in Asheville. You've been up there, Al? Absolutely, uh, so, yeah. absolutely. And I actually want to give a shout-out to uh, Jason and Lee with Liberator for bringing them in. Definitely. Oh, Congratulations. Absolutely. Great folks, yeah. yeah. And speaking of Liberator, by the way, they're having an Axis and Allies beer night uh, at uh, Lincoln Phil Station uh, this week. So check our radio. Check our Beer Guys Radio. Uh, dot com uh, events page for that information. So that's pretty good uh, and fun to have. Absolutely. So you're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We're going to take a quick break and we will be right back. I'm Steve Anderson, head brewer at Red Brick Brewing Company, and you're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. The Beer Guys are back right after this. Hey, it's Aaron. I want to give a quick shout out to our newest sponsor. It's Hop Spot Beer Tours of Atlanta. Now, there's a lot of tours out there, but what makes Hop Spot Beer Tours different? Well, you get exposure. There's more to Atlanta craft beer than just breweries. A Hop Spot Beer Tour gives you the who, what, where, and when to craft beer right here in Atlanta and the state. Education. Whether you're a native, a transplant, or a visitor, you'll always learn something new. And connection. HopSpot connects you to guests, local breweries, and businesses to create those lasting relationships. 
we invite you to check out what makes HopSpot different. Like them on Facebook, follow them on Twitter and Instagram at HopSpotATL, and of course, visit HopSpotBeerTours.com. Use promo code BEERGUYS10 and receive 10% off your order. HopSpot Beer Tours. Hop on, get connected. That's HopSpotBeerTours.com. Here on the Beer Guys Radio Show, we always encourage you to drink local. And of course, shop local at your favorite bottle shop. But sometimes you want something different. A beer you heard about online, or maybe you've got a bottle share to attend, but nothing special to bring, or you just want to check out something new. That's where Inside the Cellar comes in. They stock lots of craft beer from breweries that may not be available in your hometown. Shipping is almost free for every 12 you buy, and if you use our special promo code, you'll get 10% off of your order. Inside the Cellar also stocks wines and craft soda, too, and using Inside the Cellar helps us out. So head to BeerGuysRadio.com, click on the Sponsors link at the top of the page, and click the Inside the Cellar icon to shop, and enter our special promo code for 10% off, too. That's BeerGuysRadio.com, click the Sponsors link, and then go to Inside the Cellar. Hey, it's Aaron, and you know what I hate? When I miss a favorite TV show and forget to DVR it. Don't let this tragic tale happen to you when it comes to Beer Guys Radio. Subscribe to us on demand. It is easy. If you've got iTunes, Stitcher, or any other iOS or Android podcast app, search for us, or go to BeerGuysRadio.com, click Listen, and you can copy and paste the RSS feed. While you're there, by the way, give us a review. It really helps. That's Beer Guys Radio on demand. Catch it today. The Beer Guys Radio Show on the Beer Guys Radio Network. BeerGuysRadio.com Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I didn't enjoy it at all. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. On the phone with us right now, we've got Eric Meyer. He is the brewmaster of Cahaba Brewing in Birmingham, Alabama. How are you doing today? Doing good, guys. Doing good. Excellent. Welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your background. How'd you get started in this? Um, like a lot of guys out there, just uh, had a buddy, and we like drinking beer together, and uh, just started making beer in the, in the kitchen. Um, just started pursuing it from that avenue, got kicked out into the garage by my wife, <laughs> and uh, just started brewing out in the garage, and uh, and here we are today. <laughs> There you go. You know, we, we see we see that you say that the brewing is a passion, and we actually recently talked to Harris Stewart over there at Trim Tab, and yeah. uh, he said much the same thing, and it seems like that's that's pretty common. A lot of people are kind of called to beer. So, you know, is this something you knew? Uh, you know, when did you know that you'd start a brewery and you feel you're kind of called to do it? Uh, I mean, I don't know that I was ever really called. Um, I think I think to drive on the passion side, you know, just the ability uh, from my buddy teaching me, you know, how to, how to homebrew, go and see Kim at Alibrew and him showing us these extract kits and going, man, this beer is, is really not that good. But you know what? This was so much fun to make it. And this tastes so good because I made it. And knowing that you made another batch and you made another batch. And the next thing you know, you're doing partial mashes. You're doing all grain. And you just keep pursuing it because it's just so much fun, one, from the science side and from the creative side. But then, two, you know, when you're done – friends come over, neighbors, you know, you're drinking it yourself. And it's just that, that enjoyment. And then from there, it just, you know, things just happen. Uh, you know, a buddy came into town, old, old college buddy came into town. It's like, Hey, I've been traveling and your beer tastes as good as these guys beers in these brew pubs around the country. So, so why don't you take a step out and try this? And beer in beer in Birmingham, beer in Alabama is still so young. Um, at that point in time, there was uh, really only three breweries, four kind of on the way. And uh, so, so my goal originally was, hey, I'm going to get some buddies, give me some gentlemen's handshakes. I'm going to go rent a warehouse down by my house, and I'm going to go buy a little one-barrel Blickman brew house, and let's just keep brewing. And, uh, and luckily, I knew a guy who started Free the Hops, and he said, he said, Eric, you know, if you make beer like you make it at home, four barrels a week is not going to get you very far. So... <laughs> Yeah, it's tough to do anything with that for sure. No, yeah, we would we would be doing a barrel would be two half half kegs, two okay. fifteen gallon kegs. So, gotcha. Okay. So yeah, we'd be looking about eight half barrels a week is what I was shooting for. You know, that's twenty four hours worth of brewing on on a system like that. That's a lot. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so luckily, you know, straight to ale up at Huntsville, they were already rolling. They've been rolling for a little while. 
and uh, they were about to scale up. So their three and a half barrel system was up for sale, and you know, a couple more gentlemen's handshakes, and and here we go. So, so yeah, I don't know that I was ever called. It's just one of those things where, you know, the opportunities present themselves, and it's that passion, that drive, that that hey, let let's climb this hill a little bit further. Let's see what's on the other side. Let let's jump in the river and let's see what's around the other the next bend. You know, you mentioned that there was only a few breweries in Alabama when you started this. We had uh, we recently had a gentleman that does a podcast in Chicago on here, and, and he joked with us. We heard his show, and he's joking about, they said several times, Georgia's only got 40 breweries, and, and they laugh at it like it's, <laughs> and I imagine Alabama is much like we are. We're pretty darn proud of those 40 breweries. That's, we've come a long way. So Well, and, and you're right. I mean, I, I don't know how many breweries are in, in Georgia, and I should know how many there are in Alabama, but I know we just had our Brewers Guild meeting. Uh, here in the state uh, the past couple days and for us even as brewers to look at I mean not even the number of breweries but the amount of beer that Georgia produces is somewhere around I believe 300,000 barrels of beer a year the state of Georgia is able to produce that Um, Alabama I think hit 50. Wow yeah (laughs) and 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 that's and that's progress which is you know that's a good thing for sure right right and and that's why I like to say beer is just so young yeah. Still so young in Alabama. Yeah, and now speaking of young, you know, you all just passed the uh, the beer to go law here back in June. How is how, how have you seen that affect your business? Uh, it, it's been a good, um, I want to say, good tourism avenue. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, there again, I'm running my taxes, so I should know how many how many growlers <laughs> I sold. That's right. I mean, we we might do a, a handful of 32 ounce fills. Um, we probably a day, and probably a couple 64 ounce fills a day. Um, you know, we have, we have our canned American blonde here that people can buy. How many did we sell? I think we sold maybe a dozen or two six packs okay. in the, in the past month. So, so it's not a huge, huge increase in, uh, in revenue or volume for us. But the cool thing is, is when people are, are traveling from New Orleans, headed back to Atlanta, you know, headed to Asheville, you know, a lot of times let's stop in Birmingham. Let's, let's have something to eat. Let's stop by a brewery, get some local feel, see good places to eat from there. Oh, man, I really like this beer. Let me take some with me. And that, that ability, or, hey, I just did a tour, and you guys rock. Let me take some beer with me. Let me go show my buddies in Atlanta. Let me show my buddies in Nashville, or, you know, vice versa. Um, that's, that's just one of those things that, that has really allowed us to do. Um, you know, I know some people wish we would sell our beer for cheaper, you know, to go out of the brewery, but, you know, our retailers are what – what what are our cake you know they're what makes makes this brewery survive or our retailers and you know we can't we can't undercut those guys yeah um, and as, you know i know that's something that we hear we hear a lot here we hear it with other breweries you know that it's nice to be able to do that but you don't want to you know undercut your retail partners uh, on this right. but uh but there are right. some things that that's afforded to breweries with this now have you done any brewery only releases or do you intend to maybe something that you know special that is not going out to your retail partners, just something that, uh, you know, for people who want to visit the brewery. Yeah, yeah, we actually run a uh, thing we call uh, Small Batch. I mean, everyone's got small batches, but we run yeah. a small batch. Um, it comes out each week, um, and we got one guy, and that's, that's his main job, besides doing a bunch of other things, but his main job is come up with a recipe, brew it, and, and take it all the way to the, through the process. So it's a really good learning tool um, for guys inside our brewery. And uh, so, so that's something – really cool that we do and those are you know unique just to our tasting room now if something is just hot i mean you have retailers coming in here saying hey i want this in my retail location then that's the only time some of those small batches will actually step outside the brewery so we do offer those types of things so people can come in and let's say try our uh try our hefeweizen or uh, we actually just did another hefeweizen with uh, some lemon drop hops with this nice lemon, lemony characteristic coming through. And it was just, I mean, it was just awesome. So, so you're able to provide those kind of things to people coming in, wanting a growler fill or a crowler fill or, or, or just a pint. Yeah, now uh, you recently just expanded quite a bit. Uh, you've gone to a, to a 30-barrel tank and, uh, or a 30-barrel system and 51,000 square feet uh, this year. Uh, has that been right. quite a change for you guys? Yeah, say I the was, least. Uh, I understatement. Say, I, I, yeah. Uh, yeah, at some point in time, I'm gonna pull my head out of these weeds. <laughs> yeah. um, we were we were laughing today that uh, I think today or tomorrow is our six month anniversary in this building, and I can't believe that we've we've already been here for six full months. Um, yeah, yeah, we we stepped up 
uh, got a big building, got big equipment. Um, now it's time to really start uh, pumping some good beer out of here and uh, and have some fun. Now, you've grown rather quickly. I mean, if you started in 2012, you said with a one barrel, right? And then to a three and a half and then a 30? Yeah, we actually never took that one barrel step. Um, okay. So we uh, we started in 2011. That's kind of when this one barrel idea started rolling. Uh, 2012, we finally got in making beer on a three barrel system uh, about 20 blocks from here. And um, it wasn't up, it was up until, you know, January, the first of January this year that we actually pulled our last batches out of that other system. So um, it's been a few years. It's taken us a while to find a good location. Um, as with so many cities, this uh, move back into the downtown areas, the uh, the renovating of these old buildings and um, so many things has just sent, uh, you know, rent prices through the roof. So sure. it took us a while to find a space that was that was good to put in a manufacturing facility, but then also cool cool enough to have a good tasting room. Because you guys are actually in an old gin, is that correct? Well, we're, we're in the old Continental Gin facility. Um, it's an old building that was built in 1929, and it's a whole complex where people used to come. I call it like the Walmart of buying a cotton gin, um, where people would come here, go through their little classes on how to work a cotton gin, then go see the entire process of this cotton gin being made all the way up until the barn that they needed to build on their property to put this cotton gin in. So, so it's the old Continental Gin Company. We're in the old foundry building, so okay. where we used to have some old glass furnace, and we have a 50, two 50-foot-wide cranes that, that used to run the entire length of this building, um, which looked really cool. Definitely cool. We're talking to Eric Meyer, the brewmaster at Cahaba over in Birmingham, Alabama. We're going to take a quick break right now. You're listening to the Beer Guys radio show, and we'll be back right after this. The Beer Guys are back right after this. The Beer Guys Radio Show on the Beer Guys Radio Network. BeerGuysRadio.com It's Aaron and Tim, the Beer Guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock is always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy. They have 12 of them. Bottles, too. Not sure what to drink? All of their beer service are Cicerone certified. And if you got someone who isn't a beer fan, not to worry. Truck and Tap carries wine, mixed drinks, and even handcrafted sodas. As for the truck part, well, that's when it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area of food trucks daily that way you're getting a different menu every day check it out truck and tap in downtown woodstock truckandtap.com let them know that the beer guy sent you hey this is aaron i want to thank you so much for listening to the beer guys radio show we've got some really awesome things that are coming soon that will help us engage with you some more we're not going to lie to you though it takes time effort and money to produce this show every week so if you'd like to be part of the beer guys family we would love your help Head to patreon.com slash beer guys to become a sponsor. We're not going to beg. Okay, maybe just a little bit. But hey, we've got some great swag for those who become a sponsor. And you'll be among the first to know about the great things that are coming to the Beer Guys universe. Again, that's patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash beer guys. Or you can go to beerguysradio.com and click the sponsor link. We thank you for your support and cheers. Hey, it's Aaron, and you know what I hate? When I miss a favorite TV show and forget to DVR it. Don't let this tragic tale happen to you when it comes to Beer Guys Radio. Subscribe to us on demand. It is easy. If you've got iTunes, Stitcher, or any other iOS or Android podcast app, search for us, or go to BeerGuysRadio.com, click Listen, and you can copy and paste the RSS feed. While you're there, by the way, give us a review. It really helps. That's Beer Guys Radio on demand. Catch it today. Hey there, mateys. Hunting whales? We've got you covered with Tim's Whale of the Week. And it's a, a rare event, Tim, that we're actually drinking one of your whales we of the are. week. I'm very excited about this. We are. So we got two, and I'm going to save the one we're sipping for, for after. So okay. one that is just uh, recently shipped to, to Georgia, uh, maybe hitting stores now, is Westbrook's Key Lime Pie Goza in cans. No, that so sounds that's, like my jam. Yeah, right there. that's been around. Uh, they've they've had the draft version a couple times and that, but uh, this is the first time that one's hitting cans, and uh, a lot of people are looking forward to that one. That should be a good beer, definitely. So, and another one, and th- these these two are going to fall into. If you're hunting these wells, then you, you may have missed the the boat yep. for this this well washing adventure. This is a Prairie's Happy Br- Apple Brandy Barrel Noir. 
and birthday bomb. And, uh, you know, they, they hit earlier this week. There is a chance they're, they're out of here. Pretty much. But, uh, yes. But I, but I have seen them recently still hitting certain stores. Yes. So something worth, uh, looking out for. We're drinking the, Apple brandy barrel noir right now, Aaron. You were lucky enough to get one of each. And yes, this is delightful. I'm, I'm really. I know why this is a whale. This is absolutely brilliant. It's really good. So, yeah, Al said he was getting a little bit of that uh, like uh, creme brulee on it. Yeah, yeah. but I, not annoyingly sweet creme brulee. It's more just like yeah, very chill, well balanced, mm-hmm. very complicated. I love that the complex at the end, man. And then you do get a little slight fruity note, so you do know there's a little slight apple in there. Yeah, I've got, a secret, I've got a secret, by the way, too. Uh-oh. If you uh, go to BeerGuysRadio.com, click on Sponsors, and we've got a little tab. It's called Inside the Cellar. If you click on that, follow the directions and go to Inside the Cellar, you might be able to order this online. Um, I saw it there the other day. They sent us an email the other day saying it was in. So if you can't get it in store, and I always encourage you to shop local, but if you can't get it, you may want to try there. So just FYI. There you go. There's I love their artwork, too. If you need yeah. to. Yeah. Their artwork is dope. Yeah, definitely. So we're going to f- probably finish up this uh, Apple Brady Noir here and open up the birthday bomb here in just a second. But first, let's continue that interview that we had with uh, Cahaba's Eric Meyer. We are talking to Eric Meyer of Birmingham's Cahaba Brewing. We have friend of the show, L. Sharpton, in the studio with us today. L, how you doing? What up, homie? Very good. Good, good. He was so, busy drinking beers last segment, so I couldn't get <laughs> right. it. He's busy running around, but Forgive yeah. Me. Exactly. So we're going to ask a few more questions here. Uh, Cahaba, I've got uh, tons of questions, but um, you know, one thing we wanted to ask, uh, what, what's the inspiration behind the name? Uh, well, Cahaba is one of the main water sources that runs through southern Birmingham. So, uh, so it's, it's one of those good things of the, the river being right here. Um, and then also for me, uh, one of my old jobs was to canoe or hike rivers and GPS outflows and bridges and all those kind of fun things. And I actually did the Cahaba River all the way from its, uh, from its headwaters all the way down into uh, one of our neighboring counties. So it kind of has a good, good uh, meaning to me. Did you have some uh, questions, uh, Ale, uh, for uh, Eric? Um, just congrats, man, on your growth. And I've definitely yeah. witnessed it and visited you guys a couple of times. Um, you make some gangster brews, man, and you got my full support. And I love the whole Birmingham scene. It's It's been growing tremendously. Uh, so there are a couple oh, yeah. of the spots I go to, Jay Clyde's and, yep. um, you know, just in general, man, you guys are throwing down. So when I come back out there, we got to kick it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just let me know. I'm here. Yeah, so speaking of which, uh, that, that Birmingham craft beer scene kind of has grown. We've had Jay Clyde on. We had Trim Tab on a couple of mm-hmm. weeks ago as well. It seems like you guys are becoming a nice little hub over there in, in central Alabama for craft beer. It it has been awesome. I mean, with the with the uh, the food scene we already have, yeah. with Chris Hastings and Frank Stitt and all these nationally, internationally known guys and all these these restaurants coming in, um, it's just so cool that we we already kind of have a food scene, and then the fact that we start making some dang good beer right here in Birmingham has brought even more people in, and it's it's a it's a really cool thing. Excellent. Now we talked about uh, we talked about the brewery and a lot about the brewing, but uh, let's talk a little bit about your beers here. So All right. I know your your core beer is uh, the Liquid Amber, is that right? And uh, your American Blonde. Yeah, yeah, we have uh, we have five cores, but two of our two of our main are the our American Blonde and that and that Liquid Amber. And uh, the uh, the American Blonde is our biggest seller. That's the best best beer to transition uh, a lot of these macro guys and girls into the craft world um i mean even in the tasting room or out in the market it's just a uh it's an all pilsner based beer um it's actually based on a munich hellas recipe that uh that we did originally um in in the first brewery and that true to style lager just annihilated our equipment it just couldn't keep up with that with that uh that lagering phase so um so we we changed out some of the yeast uh to make it a little bit to make it an ale and to make it a little bit easier for us to process, and it has just, it's been like wildfire. Um, then this liquid ambar is actually named after the sweet gum tree that's all over the southeast. You know, you step on those little spiky balls or you throw them at your brother. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I hate those things. <laughs> yeah, what the hell yeah. are they for? Yeah. So, so it's actually named after that, but it's, a, it's an American amber. It's a hoppy amber, and we tell people all the time, hey, if you, if you like a beet amber, I like a beet amber. It's nice. It's a malty beer. If you like that, you're not going to like my beer. Just just to let you know now, yeah, because it's got a strong malt um, bitterness to it that uh, we just we wanted to create something that that you know when you when you're drinking a multi beer you enjoy a couple, 
you know, but after a little while, you're like, God, just, I need, I need something different. Or when you're drinking a hoppy beer, you're just like, God, this is so awesome, but I can't taste anything, you know, <laughs> I can't eat anything. I can't enjoy this pizza, this barbecue, this fried chicken, whatever I'm watching the game with, I can't enjoy it. And that's kind of how we created this Amber is, it's just something that's got enough malt character to keep you just drinking and drinking, but it's hopped up enough to where you're actually still interested beer after beer after beer. Awesome. Eric Meyer, a brewmaster at Cahaba Brewing in Birmingham. CahabaBrewing.com. It's, again, in downtown Birmingham. Thanks so much for joining us today. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, guys. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. Big thanks there to uh, Eric Meyer of Cahaba Brewing for speaking with us today. Yeah. Telling us about the brewery over there in Birmingham. L. Sharpton in the house with us. Love it, man. Good times. And we're drinking some beers. Yeah. We just so. finished that uh, Apple Brandy uh, Noir, and now we just opened up the Birthday Bomb. Thanks to me to getting it, by the way. I just want to, make to that, I want to shout that out. You're not it. supposed to to shout out. You, Listen, are you shouting shout out yourself? Son. Listen, I, I, you oh know, my I, need, I need to do that every <laughs> once in a while because i got to be me. Aaron's like, big shout out to Aaron. <laughs> wear it up, wear it up. Hey, I took the big long drive to Greens to go get this, yeah. so there you go. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, then I'm not giving you a shout oh, okay, out. Okay, well, then, then there so. you go. That's fine. That's all right. Oh, gosh. Now, what, so, do you guys, what do you guys think? So I just, uh, you know, you're the, you mentioned strong pepper on the nose. On oh, this. yeah, right away. You're thinking you're going to, what was that stone joint? With the, it was like those oh. pepper bears that were bananas. Uh, it was like a super pepper. I can't remember the name of it. There but it had that intensity to that. Right. Crime and punishment? Yeah. That, right, yeah, yeah. That's crime it. And crime punishment. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And that nose on Mackley, you're like, yo, and I was preparing myself for some craziness. But actually, uh, I kind of like the pepper in this one, man. Um, again, balance is the key. And I think they did a great job with that. I like pepper and stouts, mm -hmm. so it's yeah. not overbearing. This is good. Yeah, it is. I expected to like. I expected this to be one of my favorites from Prairie. From the feedback I've got from everyone, me too. I preferred the apple brandy barrel. Mm -hmm. So this, this is good. Yeah, but that apple brandy barrel was phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. I haven't tried the pirate bomb yet. I've had the barrel aged bomb, but I haven't mm -hmm. tried the pirate yet. I'm looking forward to trying that one too. But it's in my stash, waiting to be open. Yeah. But uh, but no, this is excellent as always. But uh, it's a good whale to go hunting for. But yeah, like I said, I mean, I think it's a consensus here. If, if you're hunting, if you have one choice, take that take that apple brandy barrel noir. I think it's absolutely the one. To yeah, go if with. you got to choose one, yep. that's the one to go with. You want to worry? Take that, and also the name itself gets the yeah, you know, it gets the mouth watering a little bit. <laughs> apple brandy apple barrel brandy just makes you feel noir. happy. So yeah, so yeah. So Ale, you just you were talking earlier in the show, by the way, about your travels. What else have you been up to? Oh man, I'm uh, been working on a couple of surprises that I'll be having for people uh, within the month. Yeah, um, a web series that's going to be extra dope. Um, I got to keep on the wraps until it comes out, but please look for it. And, and you know, you guys will be one of the first to know about it and, uh, do a lot of traveling. Like I said, I did Dallas and Detroit and Savannah, and now I'm going to Carmel, um, and Cali and, uh, Hitting up a little of that West Coast. All right. Throw up the W for that. There's not a lot of good beers, though, in California, though. So no. I know. I'm going to be looking yeah. all over the damn place. Terrible. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I don't think yeah. so. Anyway, yeah, we're going to go talk to more with Ale and uh, have our hot list and the giveaway to give away. That's very exciting. That's Ooh. coming up here in just a couple minutes. We'll be back right after this. You'll listen to the Beer Guys Radio Show, and we'll talk to you soon. I'm Josh Rachel. I'm the co-owner and brewmaster of Jekyll Brewing, and you're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. The Beer Guys are back right after this. Hey, it's Aaron. I want to give a quick shout out to our newest sponsor. It's Hop Spot Beer Tours of Atlanta. Now, there's a lot of tours out there, but what makes Hop Spot Beer Tours different? Well, you get exposure. There's more to Atlanta craft beer than just breweries. A Hop Spot Beer Tour gives you the who, what, where, and when to craft beer right here in Atlanta and the state. Education. Whether you're a native, a transplant, or a visitor, you'll always learn something new. And connection. HopSpot connects you to guests, local breweries, and businesses to create those lasting relationships. We invite you to check out what makes HopSpot different. Like them on Facebook, follow them on Twitter and Instagram at HopSpotATL, and of course, visit HopSpotBeerTours.com. Use promo code BEERGUYS10 and receive 10% off your order. HopSpot Beer Tours. Hop on, get connected. That's HopSpotBeerTours.com. Here on the Beer Guys Radio Show, we always encourage you to drink local. And of course, shop local at your favorite bottle shop. But sometimes you want something different. A beer you've heard about online, or maybe you've got a bottle share to attend, but nothing special to bring, or you just want to check out something new. That's where Inside the Cellar comes in. They stock lots of craft beer from breweries that may not be available in your hometown. 
Shipping is almost free for every 12 you buy. And if you use our special promo code, you'll get 10% off of your order. Inside the Cellar also stocks wines and craft soda, too. And using Inside the Cellar helps us out. So head to BeerGuysRadio.com, click on the Sponsors link at the top of the page, and click the Inside the Cellar icon to shop, and enter our special promo code for 10% off, too. That's BeerGuysRadio.com. Click the Sponsors link, and then go to Inside the Cellar. It's Aaron and Tim, the Beer Guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock is always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy. They have 12 of them. Bottles, too. Not sure what to drink? All of their beer servers are Cicerone certified. And if you got someone who isn't a beer fan, not to worry. Truck and Tap carries wine, mixed drinks, and even handcrafted sodas. As for the truck part, well, that's when it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks daily. That way, you're getting a different menu every day. Check it out. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the Beer Guys sent you. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The numbers all go to 11. Does that mean it's louder? Well, it's one louder, isn't it? Now, back to the Beer Guys radio show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We're having a good time in the studio. We're drinking a lot of great beers. Yes, we are. We talked to Cahaba. We did. We're talking with L. Sharpton right now. All day, baby. Our buddy uh, Jarrett stopped by earlier and dropped us off some Bell's beer that we've been enjoying. And what are we enjoying right now? Well, you know, so, he gave me a little, uh, another little gift. Uh, it's uh, a beer from Rodenbach. This mm. was highly sought after. Oh, that's, it's, that's, it's, that's, that's fantastic. Now, you're not a sour guy. I'm not. This is fantastic. So we're drinking uh, Rodenbach Alexander right now, and this is a fooder beer with sour cherries. I'm not mad at it at all. Oh, no, not great. at all. Me and Alex, we're all right, mm-hmm. right? I'm so, so yeah. So that's what we've uh, we've had a lot of beer. We have today. actually. It's uh, this has been fantastic. So, so Ale, um, you've been traveling a little bit, uh, and, and uh, you know, of course, with the recent news and things that have been going on in the world, we are a craft beer show. We don't like to get too much into what's going on, but right. You had an interesting take. You were in Dallas, actually. Yeah, it was. Last I week. was Dallas on business, and um, I went to. I always make it a point to go to the. Best beer bars in the city whenever I can. So I went to Ginger Man, got my chill on, went back, went out to dinner. Then I get a phone call saying, hey, uh, there's a huge shootout. I'm like, word? Where? They're like, um, two blocks from your hotel. So you'll be staying at this, that again, that place is called Something Moth. I didn't look it up, my bad. But it's amazing when you go there. So I just kept, they had like 40 taps. Yeah. Got my taste on. And just uh, when I got back. It was uh, police all over the place. I took a picture of the cops behind me and everything. It was really nuts. Um, but I got I got some sleep and bounced. Yeah. Got out of there, man, and prayed for everybody. Yeah, and I think that's all we can do. You know, I think uh, there's a lot of things going on in this country at the past uh, six months to a couple <clears throat> of years, really. It's kind of come to a head these past few weeks. And the one thing that I think we can all agree on is that beer is good. Mm. <laughs> I'm pretty mm-hmm. good with that, you know? And, and we can we can talk back and forth to each other, and everyone has their little clicks on Facebook and Instagram. We all have our opinions on what someone's on the left, someone's on the right. But I think we can all agree that uh, that beer is good, and and a small way to maybe do some good you know, in this trying time is to go bring a craft beer to your neighbor, yeah, and just have a talk. Yes. You know, I mean, in this day and age, I don't know my neighbors. Be you know? excellent. To Be each excellent. Other. To, that's. You know what? Right? That's brilliant. See, see, and it was uh, either Bill or Ted. <laughs> I don't so know we what say it was. this. I say this little joking no. here, but that's true, man. Just be, just be cool with each other. Right? Beer, beer. I always say this um, is ninety nine percent get not free, if I can say that. Um, you just cussing. Did. Sorry, it's okay. But um, it is, and I, I love the industry for that. People are very down to earth, and if you know, entire communities were like this on a on a regular that. Everything would be a lot better, man. Um, and that place I was talking about was Meddlesome Moth, by the way. Yes. Um, anyway, yeah, I, I think um, w- they need to take notice of how the beer world is. Uh, it's open arms to to everyone just having a good time. Yeah. And, and it doesn't matter. You know, yeah. I mean, black, white, Republican, Democrat, whatever, everyone can enjoy a great beer and chill and hang out and really kind of agree on 99% of the things that we pretty much agree on You mm-hmm. know, here in this country. And... and just relax, you know, as Charlie Pape- <laughs> as Charlie Papazian once said, right? Relax, don't worry, have a homebrew, you mm-hmm. know? Just have a beer, man, and just hang right. out. It's not that bad. So, 
Anyway, that was my soapbox. So I just want to make sure they the get soapbox. that off my chest. Uh, chest because, because yeah, it's, it's there is you, you know I I don't like to get involved in politics. I stay often on Facebook and that. Uh, I've got good friends of every race, gender, everything. You know, it's uh, I don't like getting involved in politics because yeah. there's people are too. People get angry about it. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, both sides of it. And, and there's some people out there that uh, have a reason to be angry. There's things going on that need to get addressed. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of venue for uninformed opinions these days right. with Facebook and that. And, and it exposes it's, it's a lot of people, which so. is actually good and bad. Yeah. Um, right. But just so we have the mission of of everyone coming together, like I appreciate the fact that there's white people and all different races marching. It's not a, a black mm-hmm. thing. You know, um, and and that's how we need to, to see it as a whole community of the U.S. and abroad, of course, uh, being protected the right way and and going out like that. I think is the best way to roll. Sure, and then that's what makes America great. You know, is the right to protest and the right to, the right to a free assembly. And and you know, again, this is a beer show, and I don't want to get too deep into these mm-hmm, types mm-hmm, of things. Mm-hmm. But uh, but you know, I mean, it, it is it, it's it's something that's been on my heart and uh, kind of been heavy on my heart over the past couple of weeks or so. And uh, you know, I just if I had anything to say, is just again, relax, have a beer, talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends, man. Just uh, right. introduce them to something new, and just uh, just have a chat because we just don't do that anymore in this in this country anymore. Well, if we give Aaron any more beer, he's going to be over here hugging us. You know that, oh, right? That's all good. So. That's the homie. Can we sing We Are the World? And <laughs> yeah, start, absolutely. Uh, start start by, uh, I got it ready, man. Off. I got the instrumental ready. All right. Good deal. Yeah. <laughs> hey, before I get too sentimental, we've got a giveaway to give away. We do. What do we, we got? We do. So our giveaway with this winner, winner this week is Rich Huffman. Awesome. Rich, thanks for following us along. We'll be in touch, and we'll Congrats. get you a Congrats. swag pack out to you. Yeah, we got some cool stuff going on, so that's great. For Rich, I went to school with a Rich Hoffman, but not a Rich Huffman, so I don't think that's him. He didn't win, Aaron. <laughs> he didn't. That's good to know. That's all right. Yeah. Time for the hot list. The beer guys have the scoop on what you need to know for next week. That's hot. So what's on the hot list this week? We've got a lot of stuff on the hot we list do, this week. We do, actually. So. Do you want me to go first or whatever? We can. No, I, I want to go first. Do it. So shout out to me for this hot list, Thank Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to live that one down. Sorry. So uh, Monday. There is a celebration of craft breweries and distilleries yeah, that looks at good. Urban Tree. Mm-hmm. So check that out. Tuesday, uh, Vinkman's Beer Dinner. They've had a series of beer dinners. And uh, this week is Sweetwater. So you can go check it out. Have a beer dinner. There. I haven't been to Vinkman's, but I've heard I good things either. about it. It's cool. Place. It's cool. Yeah. 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 So Live music. Definitely something I'd like to check out. So now this is officially next week, but it's so awesome, I want to go ahead and mention it. So next Saturday... Cherry Street is having a brew fest. Okay. There's the National Beer Mile going on. Okay. Uh, at Mox Lagers, there is the Old 320 Fest, and Three Taverns turns three. That's that's called an Uber day. All of that next Saturday. <laughs> that's all Yo, on that's next Saturday. That's the only so weird. When Atlanta packs so many things in one day, it, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. that terror, it just sucks. That's and it of- happens uh, uh, two, three times a year. You'll just see everybody just... All on one day. There was a there was a Saturday a couple months ago. There was like six big yeah. events. I had on, on my website. Day. I was like, "Yo, what am I gonna do?" Yeah, but yeah. Make cameos at each one. It's like five five. I was like, "Hey, five minutes here, five there minutes you go. there." It's all you got to do. So yeah, but uh, but yeah, we've got some cool stuff in Alabama. Actually, uh, we know we had. Uh, uh, B Nectar Meadery opened a couple weeks ago in Alabama. Now Smutty Nose is coming to Alabama too. So that New Hampshire brewery is there. A lot of things going on, including on Tuesday. At Wish You Were Beer in Madison, they're having a Smutty Nose Brewing launch. That's from 5 to 9 p.m. Also on Wednesday, BFBC and Harp and Clover having a pop-up beer dinner at Back 40 in Gadsden. And on Thursday, they've got a Thursday tappening at Singin' River Brewing Company in Florence, and they're having their Warrington's British-style IPA. So uh, some cool things, again, happening Is there any other Alabama. stuff going on with Piggy Smalls? No, I looked for <laughs> that's it. That's too bad. Because, again, that's uh, Ale, you may have missed it. The past couple of weeks, I had a, a, there's a barbecue place called Piggy Smalls Barbecue. Uh, in Bama, and I just think that's the greatest name ever. So I look for it every single time I, I, I do my events, which is great. So so <laughs> what's going on with you, man? What have you got going on this week? Oh, man, enjoy. I miss my city, man. I, yeah. I miss. Yeah, you've been traveling. My boys like you guys, uh, Jared and everybody, and, of course, my lady, Andrea. But in general, I just missed uh, kicking it here in Atlanta and how um, packed it is of a beer scene. Like, it really deserves a lot more respect. Um, being one of the top 20, I would say, beer cities mm-hmm. in the nation. I don't yeah. care what anybody says. So um, I'm, I'm just back home in Wusan and updating my website, com, and I'm um, kicking it with you guys, man, and, and then I can start traveling again. But yeah. 
Yeah. What's no, up no, for this weekend? I know you said a couple of things would pop in. So I was going to say, we can, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll catch you out at some of those beer events, too. So, you know, we've always said, too, you know, we don't have a lot of uh, of breweries as compared to other places. You know, the, the guys from Chicago there last week kind of made fun of how little, few breweries we have. Mm-hmm. But what we have are great. Yep. You know, there's not a bad one in the bunch. I mean, I think there's some great, high-quality brewers here, and the competition is really kind of sharpened the steel. The beer scene and the beer people here is excellent. Oh, and yeah. That's, you know, that's something I've said. Uh, like you said, Al, we, we might have as many breweries as, uh, you know, Denver or, right. or, or, you or know, Seattle uh, or Portland Northwest or, or whatever. Yeah. But we've got quality here, and we've got oh. a heck of a community. There's, there's a really good community here. We have two bars that frequently get voted as best in the world. The Porter and uh, Brickstore. Yeah, and we've yeah. got a couple others that are you know, Argosy probably is contenders dope. to that. Yeah. Argosy, right. Yeah. So. Um, you know, um, and the one thing I can add, oh, Reckenbar, too, is crazy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we can start going on tangent about that, but um, in general, just the way Atlanta is, man, it's just so open arms, like you're saying, of of and wide open. I've been documenting beer in Atlanta since 95. I had a hip-hop beer column. I started writing called Beer for the Poor. I spelled it P-O-U-R, but it was talking about the best yeah. deals in beer. Yes. At the time, and then, um, um, so I've been helping help push laws and being a part of the scene. So I guess it helps my credibility a lot more, uh, especially here in Atlanta. But I just seen the growth. I knew it was going to happen once we got that damn ABV law uh, pumped up yeah. to fourteen percent. So it's, Atlanta is the joint. So thank you guys for listening, everyone, and know that you need to come here and kick it with the beer guys. Especially. Sure enough. I appreciate that. And with that, I think we'll wrap up the show for this week. Coming up next week, Three Taverns is in the mix. BeerGuysRadio.com is our website. And we'll see you on the socials and on the website throughout the week. Don't forget, drink local. Cheers. Thanks for listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We're on demand via iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Always online at BeerGuysRadio.com. Aaron and Tim are back next week with more about the amazing world of craft beer. Cheers. Cheers.